Today I'm going to show you 10 iMovie editing tips and tricks that you can start implementing into your next video. I have some tips that are going to save you so much time when it comes to editing as well as some cool tricks like doing this and this all inside of iMovie. You got to just press record. Hey, my name is Noel Mott with Think Media and before we jump into tip number one, I'm going to have timestamps for all these tips and tricks in the description below as well as our pinned comment. So make sure to check that out. Without further ado, let's jump into tip number one. For this first trick, I want to add this little thumbs up button right here and move it down here when I'm talking uh, with a sound effect to notify people to like the video. So the most important thing is to find an image online that's transparent. That means there's no background. So back here, it looks like this is a black background, but really there is no background. And I'm gonna show you when I drag this over, you're gonna see that it's see-through. Now, this is not what we want it to look like. We're gonna fix it, but you definitely want a transparent background when using this effect. And so let's start by placing it where we want. So I wanted to start right here, actually to edit inside last a few seconds, and then have it go away right there. So it's three seconds long, and I'm gonna zoom in on this by dragging this this way. Now that we're closer up, let's adjust some of these settings so that it looks good. First of all, the crop is weird. It's like cropped in way too close. So we're gonna go into cropping and instead of Ken Burns, we wanna go to fit. Because we have a, uh, a square picture, if we go to crop to fill, you're gonna see that you can't fit the entire thing in there. So we're gonna go to fit and that is going to give us the correct cropping. And then the next thing we need to do is go up here and go to picture and picture. Now you're gonna see it's a lot smaller and that nothing is cropped and we're able to, if we select this, move it around and put it wherever we want. You can make it bigger by dragging these blue dots or smaller by doing that as well. I want it right here and I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and then all we need to do is change a couple more things and add a sound effect. So if we play it right here, you're gonna see that there's a dissolve. To edit. I don't want to dissolve, I want it to pop right into the video. And so if we go back into the settings for the dissolve, we're just gonna turn that to zero seconds. Hit the blue check mark. Now we're gonna watch it again and it should pop up and pop out. And I'm gonna use some of this footage actually to edit inside of iMovie so you guys can see Perfect. The last thing to do is to add our sound effect. So I have this pop sound effect that uh, will match perfectly with this image. Now I'm gonna zoom in as much as I can because I really want this sound effect to pop right when it comes on. So right there is gonna be great. I'm gonna use some of this footage actually to... We could probably even turn it up a little bit more to maybe 200%. Some of this footage actually to edit. Awesome. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna hit Command C to copy it. Then I'm gonna come over here to the end put my cursor down and hit command V to paste. Let's watch it back. Some of this footage actually to edit inside of iMovie so you guys can see what that looks like. Now you can use any image you want. You can make your own image. You can have it say subscribe, uh, subscribe and like this video, whatever you'd like. And this is just kind of showing you what you can really do in iMovie with this picture and picture effect. And then again, making sure it's transparent so that it overlays really nice onto the video. The second trick I'm gonna show you guys is how to do a speed ramp in iMovie, and if you don't know what a speed ramp is, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you right here. So, right here we have some 120 frame per second footage that I want to slow down so it's 24 frames per second, making that 20%, you know, slow motion speed. 100% would be its normal speed, uh, is what the I would see, 20% slowed down. And so I'm going to start by, uh, we'll use this clip and I'm going to just drag this on here and you're going to see something that iMovie will automatically do. They add a speed ramp for you. So right here in the beginning, it starts off at its normal speed. I'll play it through. And then right when you see this little dot right here and this symbol, uh, it goes to slow motion and then picks up again. And I'm going to show you how to tweak all these things as well as another way to do the speed ramp. So let's just watch this through first. Boom, it slows down, does a nice smooth transition into that slow motion. But as you can see, this shot is way too long. Um, and so I kind of want to change it up. So what I'm going to do is you can grab either one of these. You can grab this top one or you can grab this bottom one. And I'm going to show you what both do. So this top one is actually going to change the speed. And so I don't want to touch that yet. I will get to it in a second. Um, but this one is going to change where it either speeds up or where it slows down. So if I move this around, let's let's say I want her to be in slow motion 
while she turns her head. So right here, it's ending while she turns her head. I'm going to zoom in, move this so that it's in slow motion all the way until right there, okay? And so I want the slow motion to kick in here, so I'll bring the other one to start right here. Really the only thing that changed is how long the slow motion, boom, and then it goes back to its normal speed. So let me zoom out. I'm gonna drag this one over. I'm gonna zoom back in so that I can make some better adjustments. Basically, if you look at that film strip, just think of it as a start and end point for your speed ramp, okay? So where this one is first, this is going to be the start of the slow motion, this one's the end of the slow motion. So I want it to start right as she turns her head. Let's watch that now. Awesome, so I love that. I think that's a really cool shot. And then boom, back to normal motion. That's pretty sick. So this top piece, if I move that, it's actually gonna start to mess with uh, the slow motion settings. And so you'll see if I grab this one right here and I start to stretch it out, this is going to be, this middle part is gonna be even slower, but I don't want that because if you go too slow, it starts to look choppy. So I'll drag this out to show you what that looks like and uh, let's watch it again. All right, see how that looks pretty choppy? It's because it's way too slow, um, and so I do not want to do that. And you'll see as I keep moving this closer, the turtle is going to change from a turtle to a rabbit. The rabbit means it's going uh, faster, and then the turtle means that it's going in slow motion, and when you see nothing, that means it's at 100%. So right here, there should be no change happening, okay? So nothing changed there because it's at 100% in all three sections. And so if we drag this out, we can make that slow motion again. Now, if you're having trouble with this, sometimes it can be a little weird to mess around to get your exact timing. I'm gonna show you another way to do this speed ramp that might be easier for you guys. So we're gonna start by dragging our clip down again. And you're gonna see it still has this built-in speed ramp. So we want to go up here, select this, and change the speed back to normal. Okay, so now we have our normal clip and it's gonna look kind of weird because it's shot in 120 frames per second. It just looks kind of jittery, but that's just because it was shot in 120 frames per second. So this is it at its normal speed. So again, I'm gonna zoom in and I want this look back to be in slow motion. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the range selection by holding down the R key on the keyboard and select the parts that we want to be in slow motion. Okay, so that is the clip I wanna be in slow motion. I'm gonna let go of R and I'm gonna go up to here, select speed and change it to slow. Now here you're gonna have some options for your slow motion, 10%, 25%, 50%, or auto. I want mine at 20% and you don't have that option in here. So what you can do is if you go to custom, you can actually dial this in to exactly what you want. So for me, I want it 20%. Now you notice it's put in these symbols, so I can still use these to make uh, adjustments if I need to do that. Perfect, so this slow motion part is at 20%, which is exactly what I wanted. And then boom, it goes back to 100% right here. And again, what's nice is I can change this. Let's say if I want it to start right here, I can just drag that over and boom, it's done, simple as that. That's how you do a speed ramp. So those are some pretty cool editing hacks inside of iMovie, but stick to the end of the video where I'm gonna show you some of the best export settings for exporting your video in iMovie, as well as some shortcuts that are gonna save you so much time and save your life when it comes to editing. Tip number three is using green screen in iMovie. So I'm gonna show you how you can use a green screen explosion like this, or you can even use a subscribe button like this and overlay it on top of your video. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. You wanna start with your base layer. And for me, I'm using this shot of me running down this alleyway. So I have this clip of me running down the alleyway. I want to add in an explosion right as I leave the frame. So first, we're gonna find what part of this green screen do I wanna use. Then you're just gonna drop it right on top of your footage and to get rid of the green background, you wanna click on this right here and change it to green, blue screen, and it's already gonna do a pretty good job for you. And then in here you have some options to change this. I think it looks best probably if I turn the softness all the way to the right. And then it's done a pretty good job with cleaning everything up. Uh, so we're basically set. Now what I need to do now is just set up the right timing for the explosion. So if we watch it through right now, 
I kind of get blasted right in the explosion. So I'm gonna just drag this to the right and it's really as simple as that in iMovie, you can just drag it to the right and I'll drag it even a little bit more. So right here is maybe when I want this uh, explosion to happen, okay. So here is what it looks like with the correct timing of the green screen. Awesome. Now utilizing green screen footage is a great way to have fun in iMovie. You can find a lot of free green screen footage on YouTube and then do a converter and that's what I did for this. Obviously this isn't like the best uh, explosion, you know, it's not the most realistic, but it's, uh, it's a fun way to practice using green screen and to express your creativity inside of iMovie. A more realistic way of you guys using this green screen footage could be by using uh, one of these things right here, a subscribe button if you wanna add that to your YouTube video. It's really easy uh, when you're using a green screen in iMovie. So let's take a look at this. Boom, subscribe, hit that bell. You can add in some sound effects. And you got a pretty professional looking YouTube video going on with these graphics. Now, if you wanna learn how to actually move this green screen button maybe down more or make it smaller and in the corner, I have a video you can click on the card right now to go watch that. And it's a little bit more in depth on how to use green screen in iMovie. All right, the next trick is to use the audio effects in iMovie. And so I have a little scene here where I'm talking to someone, AKA myself on the phone. And let me show you what that looks like first and then we'll go ahead and add the effects and you'll see how much better it makes it. All right, so here I have my footage of me reacting to the phone call and uh, we're gonna not do any audio effects on this one and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Hello? Ooh, my bad. All right, now I want to add uh, the phone caller, which was myself in this instance, and I'm just going to grab this and drag it underneath and it's automatically gonna turn it into an audio file. So when I let go, it's placed on the timeline. Now I just need to line it up perfectly with the video. All right, so let's watch this through and then I'm gonna show you how much better it sounds when I add a little audio effect. Hello? Hey, I'm just calling because, um, well, well, you forgot to hit the like button on the video. Ooh, my bad. All right, so it sounds pretty good, but we're gonna make it sound a lot better. This audio clip doesn't really sound like it's coming through the phone. And so if you click up here, you're gonna see that there is some effects. So you have some that you can use for video effects. If you wanna make it in black and white or blockbuster, you know, if you wanna use any of these, you can do that. But a lot of people don't know if you uh, select the audio effects let me select my audio first. You can then change your audio to one of these effects. Hey, I'm just calling because, um, well, well, you forgot to hit the like button on the video. If I want to sound like a chipmunk, I can do that. Or hey, I'm just calling because, um, well, that's a little well, scary. You to hit the like button on the video. But for this one, I want to use telephone because I want it to sound like it's coming through the telephone. So let's select the telephone and let's listen back to it now. Hello? Hey, I'm just calling because. First things first, I'm gonna turn it up because I feel like the effect kind of made it quieter. So I'm gonna turn that up to about 250% and we'll take a listen now. Hello? Hey, I'm just calling because, um, well, well, you forgot to hit the like button on the video. Yeah, my bad. So that sounds way better. It sounds a lot more realistic, like it's actually coming through the phone, but really it was just an audio effect on this audio. Tip number five is a really cool effect that I use all the time when editing. It's called a J cut or it could be an L cut depending on when you use this effect. Let's watch these two clips and see what it looks like before a J cut. Cheers. All right, now I'm gonna add a little J cut and you wanna start by detaching the audio. So if you right click, you can hit detach audio. Now what I wanna do is I wanna have the audio actually come in on the previous clip before this footage is even shown. So I can drag the audio like this. Cheers. But now you notice the audio is off. So I need to trim this end until those two right ends align just like that. Cheers. But also this audio right here is kinda ruining the shot. So I'm gonna hold down R and I'm going to mute that audio by pulling that down. And that is how you can get rid of that audio. So let's hear what it sounds like now. Cheers. I think that's pretty cool. So I really use that all the time, but one tip here is that you want to fade in the audio. So 
this audio is going to fade down and this one is going to fade in. And that just gives a really seamless transition from one clip to the next. The reverse of this would be an L cut and we're gonna do the same thing here. We're going to right click, we're gonna detach the audio. Then all I wanna do here is start to shorten this clip so that the audio overlays the next image and let's see what that looks like now. Some average coffee out of a French press. Now I used to work at a coffee shop. One last little power tip and trick that kind of goes into what we're doing here by detaching audio is really making clips seamlessly come together. And so if we right click and we detach the audio on both of these, I'm gonna show you what it sounds like before we do this trick. You're gonna notice it's a little rough when it cuts because the other one is louder. So the audio gets louder, it's just kind of a harsh cut. And so here's something that I do a lot is I extend both of these audio clips and then like I talked about, I just fade in and fade out each of the clips. And this helps the cut to go a lot smoother. I would probably bring this audio down. We can even extend this one and then all the audio just kind of seamlessly goes into the next clip. So let's listen one more time. That sounds awesome. Just by detaching that audio, extending it out, and just fading them in and out of each other is gonna make your cuts way more smoother. All right, this next trick is a pretty cool one. I'm gonna show you how to clone yourself inside of iMovie. First, let me give you some tips on the footage that you're gonna need to make this happen. First off, your camera cannot move at all when filming this, and you wanna be in complete manual mode. So manual focus, uh, you don't want auto white balance. You wanna put it on daylight or whatever fits your scene. And then all your other settings, do not touch them. I don't even press the stop button because any little tiny movement of the camera will ruin the shot. So I recommend doing what I did here, doing it in one clip and then hitting stop at the very end. And then if you can, you wanna use some sort of studio lights. I used a window and you're gonna notice that the lighting kind of subtly shifted and that kind of ruins the shot too. And so there's a way to kind of fix it that I'll show you, but the best way to do it is under uh, LED lights or some sort of soft box or whatever lights that you have, use those instead of like outdoor lighting uh, because that can also ruin your shot. So we're gonna start by dragging down my first performance of me on the right side of the screen. So this is the beginning of my second clip. This is where I want it to start. So I'm gonna hit I and you're gonna see that is gonna be my beginning point. And then I'm gonna play it through and figure out where I want it to stop. I mean, come on, if you, if you like cameras, if you like YouTube, just subscribe to Think Media. You should. That's where I want it to end. So then I'm gonna hit O and that is uh, my selection that I want. Before dragging this on top, of this footage, what you wanna do is you wanna to go to the crop, but you wanna make sure this is selected. So that's selected. Then you're gonna to wanna to hit crop. Once you hit crop, you want to cover only the parts that you are in. You do not wanna cover up any sort of part where your other clone person is. And if you can, you want it at the very top and the very bottom. It's gonna make it easier uh, when I show you how to do this. All right, so we're gonna hit the check mark and we are going to drag that right on top of our clip. Now that they're lined up, you can see this doesn't look right. This needs to be on the left side. So I'm gonna select it again. And this time we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go to picture in picture. It automatically makes it really small, but we can scale it back up. So it's going to kind of snap to the grid. So as it snaps to the top, snaps to the left, we're then just gonna take this bottom right hand corner and drag it out to the bottom of the screen. We're then gonna hit the check mark and you're gonna see it's not perfect because there was a little bit of a cloud that came over. This shot is a little bit darker than this one. It's not the end of the world though. How you would fix that is you'd go to this and you wanna just change your highlights, your mid-tone shadows and adjust all those so that it looks um, as clean as it can. So as I adjust this a bit brighter, I knew it was darker. So as I adjust this brighter, this line right here is starting to go away because these shots are now starting to look closer uh, together. And it's still not perfect. We can still see a little bit of a line right here. So I'm going to drag this one and, and bring it up a little bit higher. 
and it really just takes some fine tuning uh, when you are fixing this kind of stuff. But you can get them pretty close. Like right now, I don't really see a line there and this is starting to look really good. So this is looking pretty good. But if we go to the very beginning, I kind of I mean, do a ghost effect there, which I don't want to have happen. So I'm gonna click on the picture and picture and then go to zero because I do not want to have any sort of dissolve. Now, let's watch this and uh, see how it looks. I mean, come on, if you, if you like cameras, if you like YouTube, just subscribe to Think Media, okay? There you go, you have a clone effect right inside of iMovie. Who knew iMovie is better than After Effects? If you're enjoying this video so far, give this video a thumbs up and comment down below and let me know how long have you been using iMovie for? With this next tip, it's very similar to our first tip with a picture in picture effect, but using it in a different way. So here I have another transparent image. I'm gonna drag that over my clip in the sky and you can see it's a planet and I'm just going to do exactly what I did in the first tip, making it go to fit and then going to picture in picture. Now I just want to kind of frame it into my shot and we're starting to get sort of a sci-fi looking shot here. We're gonna change the dissolve to zero. And now we got almost like a sci-fi looking scene here because we have uh, a planet up here in the sky. And so using picture in picture, it doesn't have just to be for subscribe and like buttons. You can do some kind of cool effects like a moon or a planet like this. And so you can get creative with it. If you wanna go even more in depth, uh, you can do some keyframing with your picture in picture. So I went to our backgrounds and I used this educational still image and here on top, I have a transparent plane. So I am going to fit the plane and then make it a picture in picture and get rid of the dissolve. So here I have a plane, but it's just sitting still. I want it to fly across the map. And how you do that is by using keyframes. So if we go back to our video overlay settings, you're gonna see this little button right here. That is for our keyframes. And so we want the plane to go from North America all the way over to Africa. So we're gonna set our first keyframe right here because we want the plane to be right here. And then I'm gonna hit play. And right there is where I want it to land on Africa. So if you don't see it, all you gotta do is kinda click on it and uh, and it's automatically added a new frame because you can see the X right here. That means there's already a keyframe on top of it. If you hit the X, it's gonna get rid of it, okay? But we're gonna drag it over here. It's added that keyframe for us. And that's just two keyframes. We have one here at the beginning and actually I can hit this back button and it will take me to the first keyframe. And then you can see right here, it jumps forward and uh, that's our second keyframe. So I'll hit the check mark and we can take a look at what this looks like. And there you have some keyframes right inside of iMovie, which is pretty cool. But the plane doesn't look natural because it's not going the way that the, the front of the plane is going. So if we go to the cropping, we can actually kind of flip this plane around and hit the check mark. And now it's looking a bit more natural going to Africa. This next tip is going to save you so much time because I use these every time I edit and I use them a lot. And these are keyboard shortcuts. And I'm gonna share just some of my favorite and most used keyboard shortcuts that uh, I really do use every single time that I edit. The most common one that I use is the space bar. It's my play and pause. So if I hit the space bar, Today, the I video is gonna start playing. I hit the space bar again and it stops. And so you can hit the, the play button and the pause button right here, but it's so much easier for me to just use the space bar to do that. The second one that I use is the zoom in feature. So most of you know that right here, you can zoom into your clips and zoom out on your timeline, but sometimes that isn't just the most efficient way to do it. So I like to use command minus to zoom out real quick. And then if I wanna zoom in on a clip, if I'm like trying to edit something that is a short clip or I'm trying to go like frame by frame, I would hit command and then the plus sign and we are going to zoom in. That makes it way easier for me to make a really micro edit by zooming in rather than it being way out here. The next keyboard shortcut I use all the time and this one probably saves me the most amount of time is my copy and paste. So there's kind of two ways to think about this. There's copy, which you hit Command C, and then if I go right here, put my playhead right there, if I hit Command V, it's going to paste the clip. 
But the one that saves me the most amount of time is actually when I hit Command C and then I go to my next clip and I hit Command V. The reason why I do this is for example, if I want to copy a crop, so this image is cropped, but I want this image to be cropped as well. I would hit Command C and then I hit Command Option V and that is going to crop the same amount. You can also do this with audio. If I want all these clips to be muted, I can just mute one of them, hit Command C and then select all these clips, hit Command Option V and now all those are going to be muted. Now this one I use a lot as well and that is Command Z. It undoes what you just did. Let's say I accidentally delete my entire project. I select it all, I hit delete and it's gone forever until you hit Command Z. When you hit Command Z, it undoes what you just did and uh, but maybe I wanted to delete the whole project. Then I could hit Command Shift Z and that will redo. And I'm telling you, I make so many mistakes where I accidentally do something, let's say I make it black and white and then I'm like, uh, I did not mean to do that. I just hit Command Z and I'm back to normal. This next trick, I'm gonna show you how to turn any video of yours into a time lapse. So here I have a 13 and a half minute clip and I'm gonna drag the entire thing down into my project. And then to turn it into a time lapse, you're gonna select the clip, go up here to the speed button, and we are gonna change our speed to fast. Here you're able to make it two times, 40 times, eight times, 20 times faster, and you're able to get that time lapse effect. Even though I put it to 20 times speed, it's still not fast enough. I mean, this clip is 40 seconds long and I really want it to be like five seconds long. So what you can do is you can go back to custom and then here you're able to change it to whatever you'd like. So instead of 2000%, let's put it at 10,000%. Now it is an eight second clip. So let's try 12,000%. Six second clip. Let's take a look and see how this looks. Awesome, so I think that looks super good and you can definitely use this if you're shooting the sky or cars coming by, whatever kind of time lapse you wanna do. Um, this is a great way to do it inside of iMovie. Now this last tip is going to give you the best export settings so that you can get the best video quality from iMovie. After you spent all this time in editing, you really wanna make sure that you're exporting it the right way so that you don't lose any sort of quality when you put it onto YouTube. So we're gonna go to file, then to share, and then to file again, and we're gonna have some settings to mess with. When it comes to resolution, the higher the number, the higher the resolution, the higher quality it is going to be. So if you shot it in 4K, you would have an option here. Uh, we shot it in 1080p, and we want it to be in 1080p. We wouldn't want it to be in 720, because that is going to be a lower quality. When it comes to format, we want our video and audio to be exported. Now when it comes to the quality, you have a few options. I think it really comes down to three options. We don't wanna use low, we don't wanna use medium if we're trying to get the best video quality. You're gonna to wanna to use high, best, or custom. And I've done tests on all three of these and, and in my opinion, the best quality you're gonna get is using best ProRes, but there is a catch. And it's actually not the best one for YouTube and I'll tell you why. First, let's take a look at high. This clip right here is gonna be 17 megabytes and if I change it to ProRes, it's 101 megabytes. Now that's a lot more storage and so if you don't have a lot of storage on your iPad, your laptop, your, your iMac, then you do not want to use ProRes. You would wanna use high or you'd want to use custom. Now custom is at 20 megabytes per second and you can see that's what actually high is using because it's the same file size. So if you wanna get a little more extra quality, you can drag this all the way up to its maximum amount and this is only gonna go up a little bit. It's not at 100 megabytes like the ProRes was, but this is actually gonna give your image a little bit more of sharpness uh, and a little more higher quality. And so I did test on all three. This is going to be the second best after ProRes, but ProRes is barely better. It's not a whole lot better. It's just a little bit sharper, but this is a very close second. And for all that storage that you're gonna save, you're gonna wanna use quality custom them and then turn this up all the way. And then when it comes to compress, I think the default is on faster, but if you want the best quality, leave it on better quality and then you're ready to export.
Here you can title your project and tell your computer where to save it. When you hit save, it starts to export. And a lot of people don't know, you know how long it's gonna take. If you click this right here, it shows you that it's exporting time-lapse. And when that circle goes away, you're gonna get a notification that your share was successful and your export is complete. I hope that helped you with editing an iMovie. Now you can go shoot some footage and then start using some of these tips and tricks in your next edit. Now, if you're interested in getting better footage to edit inside of iMovie, we put together a playlist for you guys that you can click on right now. You can learn all about lighting and audio and cameras inside of that playlist. I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next one.